Late this afternoon, NASCAR was made aware that a noose was found in the garage stall of the 43 team. We are angry and outraged and cannot state strongly enough how seriously we take this heinous act. We have launched an immediate investigation and will do everything we can to identify the persons responsible and eliminate them from the sport. As we have stated unequivocally, there is no place for racism in NASCAR and this act only strengthens our resolve to make the sport open and welcoming to all. Wallace released a statement last night on Twitter, which read in part, today's despicable act of racism and hatred leaves me incredibly saddened and serves as a painful reminder of how much further we have to go as a society and how persistent we must be in the fight against racism. As my mother told me today, they are just trying to scare you. This will not break me. I will not give in, nor will I back down. I will continue to proudly stand for what I believe in. Uh, we go live now to Talladega, where our NASCAR reporter Marty Smith is standing by with the latest. And, and Marty, this all came, as I mentioned, late last night. What more can you tell us about the incident and how it's being handled today? Mike, good morning. Um, the noose in Bubba's garage stall was actually seen by a member of his team. Daryl Bubba never saw it. Uh, he never saw it personally. And when that team member saw it, he alerted NASCAR. And NASCAR immediately had a meeting of its senior executive staff, including President Steve Phelps, Executive Vice President Steve O'Donnell, and others. And they made the decision uh, that they were going to figure out who this person is. They were going to remove this person from the sport as quickly as quickly and rapidly as possible, as swiftly as possible. And it's a brand new garage area that we're talking about. And so there's cameras. It should be a, a situation where they can look at those surveillance cameras in the garage area, determine who that person was, and remove them from the sport quickly. So who has access to that area? I was reading as much as I could on this this morning as I was arriving. What? Who has access to that place? Well, there's, a, there's a, actually a select few people now, Mike. Because of COVID-19, the garage area is roughly one-third or so of the amount of personnel you would typically see. Uh, it's about 16 people per team because of the COVID-19 protocol and restrictions. Fans are not allowed. This was not a situation where a fan might have meandered in and done this because there were no fans in the garage. So what you're looking at is you're looking at team members, you're looking at officials, you're looking at sec potential security, you're looking at maybe cleaning personnel that have access to these garage areas. Um, but there was a lot of speculation last night about whether or not a fan might have made his or her way in there. There were no fans. So I think that we can safely say that that can be removed from the from the search in the equation. All right, so obviously as that investigation goes today, you will be there to cover it for us. Now this was the first race amid the pandemic in which NASCAR did have fans there welcoming this time at least up to 5,000 fans. What, what did you see both inside and outside of the track as it relates to the Confederate flag? Well, first of all, it was a bunch of people who were really happy to be there. And I talked to the track staff last evening, Mike, between the race being postponed and the news coming out about what was found in Bubba's garage stall. So it was like a, a between time frame there. And the track staff was thrilled to report that all of the fans coming in uh, were in compliance with the Confederate flag ban. Nobody tried to sneak anything in. Nobody had on clothing that was predominantly based on the flag, anything like that. So everyone was thrilled. Now, of course, we did have the knucklehead who flew the airplane that had, a, the, uh, that had the banner that said defund NASCAR and had a big Confederate flag banner. This is very frustrating for those of us who love the sport. It's disgusting. It's deplorable. It's unacceptable. It's any one of those words that you want to use. And whomever this person is should be ashamed of themselves. This is not indicative of what NASCAR is. And it just really frustrates everybody. And it saddens us because all this does is feed into any, as, as, as Bubba Wallace said several weeks ago, any racial undertones that the sport might have, that the sport might carry from its past. It has tried so hard, especially in the last month, to take these progressive steps to show that it's unified 
and that it wants to be more inclusive. And you have guys like Alvin Kamara coming to the racetrack because they're interested after the Confederate flag ban. Marlon Humphrey, uh, the former Alabama national champion who now plays for the Ravens. Marlon was here yesterday. You have Bernard Pollard, a former All-Pro, who is infatuated with the sport right now, asking questions every couple minutes on Twitter because he's interested in the sport because of this social movement. And then you have somebody who does something like this that just, oh, it, it, it doesn't bring that to a halt. But it certainly allows people who are skeptical to go, see, I told you so. I told you they don't believe it. And please, that is not the case. That is not the case at all. This sport is not going to stop until they figure out who this is and remove them. Well said, Marty. I could feel your passion last night. I feel it this morning. And you'll be there all morning for us covering this. If there are any developments in the investigation, we'll come back to you immediately. Thank you for watching ESPN on YouTube. For live streaming sports and premium content, subscribe to ESPN+.